represent the Reverend Sun Myung Moon. Moon has said he will conquer and subjugate the world, once proclaiming, I am your brain. But whether we like it or not, we have to realize that due to the fall of the first human ancestors, we were born into the lineage of Satan. I don't care if Moon is like Hitler. I've chosen to follow him, and I'll follow him to the end. The Reverend Sun Myung Moon, leader of the Unification Church. You may know them as the Moonies. Okay! And the free sex is centered on Satan. The world literature and the media have often stimulated the free sex. Free sex should completely disappear. What is the difference between men and women? A human sexual organs are shaped as concave and convex. Why are they shaped that way? I guess Father was weak in the flesh. But then if you say that, you're saying God is weak in the flesh. Meet the Reverend Sean Moon, youngest son of the founder of the Unification Church. Christians say, we're, I'm, a, I'm a cult leader, and they say, you're a cult members. Well, they said that about Jesus Christ, too. <laughs> they... Therefore, now, nobody can oppose me. Today, I want to talk about two cults. Okay, you're getting a two for today. So it's basically a father who started a cult and then a lot of shit went down and then his son started a cult. Both of these are still operating today. There's a lot more than that going on in terms of siblings and the mom stole it from her son and then the son called her the whore of Babylon and then the daughter took over at one point and she had a scandal, they kicked her out. Then the other son, he died and the other died and the three sons died. It's a lot. I actually had both of these cults on my list of like video ideas and then someone I know personally in my life mentioned that, oh, did I tell you that, you know, I was in a cult? And I was like, no, you didn't. I would remember that. And they're like, oh yeah, uh, the Moonies. Do you know the Moonies? And I was like, yeah, I know the Moonies. I mean, I don't know everything, but I want to do a video about them. And he was like, I grew up in there. He's like, I'm no longer in the church. Like I don't practice it, but I definitely grew up a Mooney. And I was like, oh my gosh, don't, do you know that like his son now has a gun cult? And he was like, yeah, yeah. And he starts like, telling me all these things and I was flabbergasted, okay? My, my gasted was flabbergasted. So the whole thing really starts in 1945 in North Korea. There is a 25 year old man and his name is Sun Myung Moon and he is becoming obsessed with a religious teacher. And this teacher, his name is Kim Baek Moon, but we're gonna call him Kim. Now Sun Myung Moon, would end up actually stealing a lot of this guy's ideas to start his own cult. One of these things is this ritual, a sex ritual, of course. And it's called, and I think I'm gonna mess up the name, but it's called like Pikarum. It means a change of blood lineage. This ritual was taught by Kim. And when Kim taught it, it was basically the way to cleanse people from the original sin. Adam and Eve, like they took, God told her, don't eat this apple from this tree. And then the devil was like, eat the apple, it's really good. And then she was like, oh my God, I want to eat the apple. She ate the apple. And that's why we're not in heaven anymore. And that's why we're here struggling on earth because Eve ate the apple. Okay, well, some fringe groups of Christianity believe that's not the actual original sin. They believe that it was actually that Lucifer seduced Eve and that Eve had sex with Lucifer and that the, the, that's how Cain was born, right? Have you ever heard of Cain and Abel? Cain killed his brother Abel and it's like the first murder of humanity. Well, they believe that Cain is the spawn of Satan, like a demon seed that, that Eve gave birth to when she slept with the devil. And you didn't think I was gonna get this crazy this early, did you? I am, I am. And it's not even the craziest. Anyway, basically they believe that we are all demon seeds because we are descendants from Eve having sex with the devil. Right, so how do we fix it? According to Kim, we can clean it, we can purify it, and it's through this ritual, the exchange of blood. 
because Kim is pure, of course. And so he's like, I'm going to sleep with a woman. And when I do that, now she's pure. And then when she sleeps with another man, she purifies him and then their kids are pure. And this is how we eliminate the demon seeds from the earth. So this idea was also taken by Sun Myung Moon when he creates his church. Sun Myung Moon, which I'll just refer to him as Moon from now on, Moon is a student of Kim. And he starts taking this idea, practicing this ritual, and he ends up actually taking some of his followers, the female ones. He takes this idea that he has about the sex ritual. He steals his notebook, which he's going to use to create his own cult, which Kim was really pissed about, pissed about, I mean, pissed about, because Kim had this story that he would tell. He said that he was on a mountaintop in North Korea when Jesus came to visit him. And Jesus told him, like, Korea is the chosen nation and this is the new chosen people and that's why he named his church the Israel Monastery. That's what Kim said. What Moon said was that he was also on a mountaintop in North Korea when Jesus came to him. But what Jesus told him was like, hey, hi, you're the second coming of Christ. You're the Messiah. Um, and like you need to finish the work that I couldn't finish because um, I got crucified. Jesus was supposed to have children. But he got crucified, and so he couldn't have children. And so it was his mission, right, divine mission, mind you, to create this new human race that is free from sin, from the demon seed sin, right? And the way to do it is through this sex ritual. He is actually able to get followers. He gets these women to sleep with him, and he tells them that they're purified, and he also put a twist on this ritual. It was very specific. First of all, he had to sleep with a married woman. Second of all, he had to sleep with her three times very specifically. First two times, the woman had to be on top. And then the third time, the man had to be on top to, quote, restore dominion. There also had to be a witness to this ritual. And the reason for that was to remove the shame. And then after those three times, that woman was now purified. She had to go and sleep with then a man to purify that man. And then if they ended up having kids, then those kids would be pure. And it was kind of like, um, like a sexual like relay race where once you got purified by moon, you had to sleep with other people who sleep with other people to spread the purity around. Once moon completed this ritual, the woman that he slept with would become a Mary like named after sort of Mary Magdalene, because he said that when Jesus came to him in the mountain that one time in North Korea, he told him that he was supposed to marry Mary Magdalene and have kids. And so part of his mission is to create six Marys. Then he has to marry a virgin uh, in a ceremony known as the Feast of the Lamb. Okay. Over time, though, it turned into like him sleeping with several women at the same time and a lot of witness, like basically, basically, basically. Okay, what ex followers say from these early times is that he was having orgies. Okay, and he just kind of like wrapped it up in this religious bow. But it was just a way for him to have orgies, and he really liked having them with married women. Now, there's a little something I didn't mention. Okay, and that is that um, Moon was married. Right, he was. His wife, she knew that he was preaching and stuff like that, but I guess she didn't really know the extent of like the rituals and what was going on because. There was an incident that happened um, in the 40s, and there's actually a picture of this. And basically, his wife goes to the church, and when she goes there, she interrupts him in the middle of a ritual that he is having with two women. There's pictures of her, like, fighting with him. Then she goes back home, and she gets this wooden stick, and she starts breaking the signs to the church. Because another factor that I would like to mention is that Moon, why did he pick married women? Well, he said that that's like what he was supposed to do, but, but something that was beneficial with married women is that they usually had husbands money to steal. And he would justify this by saying like, this is for God. Okay. And so he basically sleep with them and convince them to take money, either sell things, steal money from their husbands and give that to him. And so he would use that money to build churches and spread his word and do everything. And the best part about it was that after he did that to these women, he would abandon them. 
And so they would be just like really in a bad way. Either their husband would find out that they stole or that they were doing these rituals and they would get upset. And so they would be shunned by the community or beaten by their husbands. And then Moon would take their money and abandon them. And so a lot of these Marys would end up alone and destitute and shunned like at the end of their life. When Moon's wife finds him doing this ritual and goes off on him, he gets scared that she's going to like report him to the police because in Korea, adultery is a crime. So he goes on the run. And this is in 1946. And he continues doing what he's been doing. Well, neighbors and, you know, people in the community, they find out about what he's doing. They don't like it. And they report him to police. In 1946, he gets arrested for, quote, anti-communist activities. And they sentence him to 100 days. Um, he was like at a labor camp. After 100 days, he gets released. And he ends up moving in with a woman and her husband. And they're like his followers. And he's preaching this, you know, ritual and things to them and obviously doing the ritual. And again, he gets reported to police and again, he gets arrested. This is in 1948. This is where he gets sentenced to five years. Now, in his official telling of the story, he talks about he was persecuted because they were afraid of him and other churches were intimidated by him. And so they reported him. So he gets this five year sentence. Um, however... He only serves two out of those five years because in 1950, North and South Korea go to war. And it's during the war that there's like air raids and the UN troops come in and he ends up getting out of prison in North Korea. And that's when he flees and he goes to South Korea. In South Korea, Moon's cult really, really takes off, really flourishes because he doesn't just set his sight on women who are married, but wealthy women who are married. And this allows him to get very large sums of money. He has these women sell one of their many homes and steal from their wealthy husbands who don't even notice. And he gets all this money and he starts building so many churches. I mean, in just a few years, he has over 30 churches in South Korea and a large following. Just like in North Korea, he's sort of leaving this trail of destruction with these quote unquote Marys where he's sleeping with them and sometimes they get pregnant and, and so he has these illegitimate children, but he just sort of doesn't acknowledge them and abandons them and, and then leaves them for younger Marys. And it's not six Marys like he claims. I mean, one of the followers who wrote this book called The Tragedy of the Six Marys, he said it was more like 60 Marys. And he's just going around doing all this. And he's also having his male followers participate in this. So it's basically just like straight up orgies going on here, according to the early ex-members. Now, keep in mind, officially, right, Moon and, you know, the officials who are still in the church, they deny this. They do acknowledge these rituals, but they claim it was only the six Marys, not that it was you know, a bunch of other women. The woman really couldn't do anything because what is she going to say, right? She's going to go say that she slept with him when she's married. That's illegal. Is she going to tell her husband that he took the money that she stole and she slept with him and he left her? She can't, they can't do anything. So they're just left to sort of suffer. And then if they're exposed, which happened a few times where these husbands would find out, and remember, these are wealthy men in South Korea. They're powerful. And now they find out that this guy is like a cult leader and he's sleeping with their wife and taking their money. So they would go and try to find him. And he was always on the run. And the thing is, is these women, they, they gave him everything. They were so devoted to the point where they did some really messed up shit. Like there were more, more than one instance where a mother a Mary, if you will, would sleep with Moon and her daughters would sleep with Moon at the same time. They would like give him their daughters to do that with. It was gross. It was gross. So sometimes you would hear a story where like she was so devoted to him. She, she let him sleep with her daughters like in the same room and then she stole from her husband and this and that. And then I'm like, where's the part where I feel bad for her? Because I don't. 
If, if, if I was there and I saw you involve your daughter in an orgy with this old man, uh, I would probably be the one beating your ass, by the way. But that's a side note that nobody asked for. Moon is starting to get bold. He's got over 30 churches. He's trying to spread over to Japan and other countries. And he's got all these followers. He really is getting a little cocky. <laughs> I mean, that's a pun if I ever heard one. Anyway, he ends up basically in a scandal. And it's called the Iwa Women's College Scandal. This is a situation where five professors and 14 students from this women's college ended up joining Moon's cult. And one of these students, she actually gets pregnant by Moon. And Moon takes her scholarship money and abandons her. And the college ends up finding out about all of this and how there's professors and students that are in this cult and they ask the police to investigate Moon. What ends up happening in this investigation is that Moon gets arrested, okay? He gets arrested as well as some of his followers and this was on the 4th of July in 1955. He goes to trial and he is found not guilty, okay? And I wanna read you a quote uh, from this book that I told you about, The Tragedy of the Six Marys, which is written by a former member. It's translated from Korea, and they keep saying, like, they were charged with gangbang, and they were investigating gangbang. They keep saying gangbang, and I'm just like, blah, blah, blah. They say that on October 4th, 1955, Moon was found not guilty and released. The purpose of the investigation then was to prove the activity of gangbang. Women who involved in gangbang had not courage to confess it and their husbands felt ashamed to say that. Therefore, Moon was released. But it was true that they had sex with Moon. I looked into it and there were also rumors of like him paying certain people off and whatever. But in any case, he gets released. There's even a photo of him getting released and he's happy and there's all his followers there to greet him. And so he feels again untouchable and he goes back to his old ways doing what he was doing. So now it's a few years later and it is 1960. And here we have a turning point. There's a woman. Her name is Annie Choi. So Annie, she joins the cult uh, in the 50s. And she was 17 when she joined. Her mom and her sister were also in this cult. And her mom is the one who brought her in. And actually, when she was 17 years old, she slept with Moon as part of an initi initiation into it, okay? And she said that, quote, he would assemble them all in a circle and take turns mounting them. Now, Annie says that her mother was very, very loyal to Moon and that her father was actually so wealthy, he was the owner of the biggest insurance company in Korea. So Annie's mom, she actually offered her two daughters, Annie and her older daughter, to Moon to marry as part of this like feast of the lamb. At first Moon was down with it. He was like, okay. But then the older sister, she decided to leave the cult, right? She had enough and she left. And this is when Moon started having second thoughts. He's like, wait a minute, this is a wealthy family. This daughter is unruly, she left. Like, do I even wanna marry the young daughter now? Because what if she decides she wants to leave and then her father is so powerful, he'll come after me. And, and he decides to back out and he chooses another girl to marry. She's 17 and Moon is 40 at this time. And she is an illegitimate child that came as a result of one of these rituals. A man that worked for him who was part of his cult slept with a woman and this girl, her name is Hak Jahan, she was the result of that. She was very shy, she was pretty, she was young and her father did not claim her. So. Moon was like, oh, this is perfect. Her father is not going to give me any trouble. So Moon decides to marry Hak Jahan and she becomes true mother. They are the true parents. After Moon marries her, he does something really messed up. He basically tells his followers that it is time to begin the era of the completed testament. Okay, what does that mean? This means that Moon had to make his wife, 17-year-old Hak Jahan, pay for Eve's sins. 
He had to reverse the fall of man. And how was he going to do that? He was going to lock her in a room for three years. And the reason why he did this was to, number one, cleanse her, but also um, get rid of her, quote, Eve-like defiance and make her absolutely obedient. Meanwhile, remember Annie Choi, the one he was supposed to marry originally and whatever? So according to Annie Choi, who was still a follower at this time, even though he decided not to marry her, while Hak Jahan was locked up in this room and all that, he was sleeping with other women and, and all that. So here's where it gets a little weirdly, okay? It's a little odd. And it's, it's going to keep getting odder. I don't Why am I talking like that? Moon tells his followers, do you want to join me in creating a sinless bloodline? Because there should be 36 royal families, sacred families, which are basically couples that he chooses to match together that are going to create this sort of pure human bloodline to populate the earth and whatever and take over. He says, this is what you guys have to do. You got to let me pick who you marry. And once I pick the matches, I need to clean your wives. Remember, okay, everyone has this demon seed in them. So what does that mean? It means that he has to sleep with all 36 brides has to do it three times with a witness, remember? Twice she's on top, third time he's on top. And so they're like, yeah. And everyone's like, oh my God, like, am I gonna be picked to be part of the 36 sacred, royal, pure, sinless families? And that is his first mass wedding. It was in 1961 in South Korea. And these would be known as like blessing ceremonies. This is something the Mooney cult was very famous for. They would have these huge mass weddings where Moon himself would pick two people to get married that were a lot of times total strangers. So this is like how it all started. Later on, as he wanted to spread it around the world in later years, and there were way more people, he didn't actually sleep with the women, but he created this ritual that they had to perform. And that's still how it is till this day. So it starts first with this indemnity stick ritual where they beat each other with sticks, the bride and the groom before they get married to cleanse each other. And like one, one bride was talking about how like, um, you know, her, her groom beat her really bad and she had like bruises all over herself, like her bottom and her legs on her wedding day, which is sounds like a lot of fun. And then, so they get, they beat each other with sticks, they get married and then they have this three, day um ritual that they have to do which is very specific on like how they have sex the positions there's like ha holy handkerchiefs that they have to wipe with and never clean and hang on the walls it's like a whole thing anyway let's get back to the timeline so now it's 1961 and he's done his first blessing ceremony and something else happens though in 1961 there is a very big political shakeup in South Korea. This results in people who are affiliated with Moon and his churches becoming high ranking in the government. And one of these people is Bohi Pak, okay? And I'm pretty, I might've said that wrong, but I'm just gonna call him BHP. So BHP, he was very close and loyal to Moon. He ends up getting affiliated with you know, the Korean CIA. He gets sent to Washington, D.C. to be sort of what they call a liaison between uh, the American CIA and the Korean CIA. A few years after that, in 1964, Annie Choi, remember her? She is the one that was supposed to marry uh, Moon, but then her sister left and whatever. Okay, she goes to... The United States as well. She gets into Georgetown University, which is also in Washington, D.C., and she goes to the States to attend. Before Annie goes to the States, she actually gets married to Moon, but in a secret ceremony. So now BHP is in the States and Annie Choi is in the States, and they're not too far from each other. Well, a year after that, Moon goes to America for the first time. And when he's in America, he visits BHP and he also 
visits Annie and they have sex together and Annie gets pregnant. He's not supposed to be married to someone else other than true mother and he's true father and he's over here having secret weddings and secret babies and all that. So he's like, we have to keep this secret. So Moon comes up with a plan and the plan is this. You're going to sit here in the States and have the baby. When you give birth to the baby, okay, BHP, who is in Washington with his wife and he has five kids, we are going to make it look like the baby is BHP's baby with his wife. And it's this whole elaborate thing where BHP's wife is pretending she's pregnant. She's like stuffing her clothes to make it look like she has a pregnant belly and telling everyone she's pregnant. Her kids even didn't know that, um, that this was, you know, fake. And then Annie is in hiding and then she gives birth to the baby. And then BHP's wife comes home with that baby. So the baby ends up being called Sammy, Sam, Samuel. Annie decides to stay even after she's done with school and be next to him. And she's visiting him all the time, but she's pretending that she's his aunt. And that's how that goes. Now it's 1970 and we have a death. And this is a death that ex-members blame on Moon. They actually call it a quote, indirect murder. One of his earliest followers his name is uh, Hyawon Yu, I think, but I'm going to call him Yu. So Yu knew all of Moon's dirty secrets. He was there from the beginning. He helped him write his uh, book, which is the divine principle, like his teachings and concepts and stuff, which was based on that stolen book that he took all the way from that first teacher, Kim. Yu knew all about that. Yu knew all about the sex rituals and everything like that. Like he knew all his dirty secrets, like I said, but now it's 1970 and Moon is number one, making a lot of money. And number two, after he went to the States, he realized he wants to expand to the States in a big way. He was already in Japan and other countries, and now he wants to go and go big. Right. And so he feels like he can't have people knowing all these dirty secrets about him that could potentially expose him and ruin everything. This is the theory, right? So you was sick and there could have been a surgery that he could do, but the problem was this surgery was actually extremely dangerous and was very likely to kill him. So even the doctors said he should not get the surgery, but Moon really wanted him to get the surgery. And you was like, no, I don't want to get the surgery because it's going to kill me. But then Moon ordered him to get the surgery. He was basically like, this is a divine order. Like you must get the surgery. This is God's will. And they say that you like begged him, like, please, I don't want to get the surgery. Like it's going to kill me. Everything like that. Not nothing. He still tells him you have to get the surgery and you gets the surgery. And lo and behold, he dies. And this is why people believe that Moon is responsible for Yu's death. And they think it's because two things, right? One, what I told you earlier to keep him quiet and stop him from exposing him, but also because he's seen as the Messiah and second coming of Jesus, he felt like people were going to expect that he could heal you and he couldn't. And so he thought the surgery would either heal him or if he died, it would be like, okay, well, it's God's will. You know what I mean? That's like two things that I found online. But in any case, people say that it's like his fault, but uh, you decide. Now it's a year later, 1971. Moon comes back to the US and this is where he makes his like big splash in the United States. He has a lot of money at this time and he is using that money to make like this sort of media campaign promoting himself and his church and everything like that. So he's got seven kids at this time and he comes to the States with his wife, um, Huck Jahan and his kids, and they get this huge estate, um, just outside of Manhattan. It's called East garden. It's like 18 acres, this huge home. And they live there and he is recruiting new members in the United States and promoting himself. This is where we get a lot of um, sort of this media 
that I want to show you. And he does this interview. This gentleman is Mr. Sun Myung Moon, who is traveling around the world calling for the establishment of one world religion and one church. Seated next to him is his interpreter, David Kim. Mr. Moon speaks only Korean. Will you explain to Mr. Moon that if I take a merry, lighthearted approach to him, it's not out of disrespect because uh, in civilian life, I'm a part-time humorist. According to your remarkable biography, uh, at the age of 16, on Easter Sunday, you had a conversation with Jesus. I am to kiss the conversation. Uh, yes, he did. You weren't with him, Mr. Kim, at the time. Uh, no, I, I was not there. Well, then did, did Jesus me. speak a good Korean? Uh, and did it have a Hebrew accent? Korean, yes, a Hebrew accent. I was a Hebrew in Korean, they converse. At, at present, Mr. Moon is regarded as a messiah. There are, by my researches, 27 working messiahs roaming the world right now, and that doesn't include John Yoko and Lemon. Or John Lennon and Yoko. <laughs> oh, I get my messiahs all mixed up. It says, God speaks today. And there's a picture of Mr. Moon. Now, it's 18 bucks to hear <laughs> the word of God through Mr. Moon, and I'm sure it's worth every nickel of it. But you can hear the word of God spoken for free by priests, ministers, and rabbis all throughout New York. <laughs> he put this price uh, uh, because uh, uh, religious authority is sinking down and even uh, believers of so-called uh, Christianity give the idea of a valuable uh, message and uh, people were giving them a pay for. Yeah, so, uh, that's a good Cadillac price on it. People respect it. We'll be back. We'll be, we'll be right back. After. Was Jesus a, a, a black man? Was he a brown man? Was he a white? These people got new to not He appears just like a form of uh, a Jewish people style. Uh, I see. Out of him shines the most enormous good nature. And, and I must tell you that if this is the Messiah I want, I want him something like this. He's even making public speeches and documentaries about his speeches. In 1974, Reverend Moon proclaimed the exciting message of God's hope for mankind. their headquarters near Fifth Avenue, members of the Unification Church International eagerly participate in a special campaign to clean up a very dirty New York City. Throughout the city, public rallies and parades generate tremendous excitement and herald the upcoming festival. May I present the Reverend Sun Myung Moon. The people of America have come from every corner of the world. That is America! And New York has become a jungle of immorality and depravity. In the sight of God, there is no black, there is no white, there is no yellow. America must return to Godism. One world under God. Why has Reverend Moon come to America? Because this is the country which God, our Heavenly Father, has chosen. We will build it with our hands. Let us unite and together 
build the kingdom of God right here on earth. Oh, bless you. And America, bless America. At this time, the way that Moon is making his money is through donations, and he would get these donations largely from his Japanese followers because there was a history between Korea and Japan where Japan used to rule over Korea and there were a lot of atrocities committed during this time. And so he quote unquote preyed on Japanese guilt is what I kept seeing online by telling these Japanese followers of his that they had to give him large sums of money to basically free their ancestors from purgatory, that their ancestors wanted them to give money to him, the true father, the Korean uh, leader, to atone for their sins that they committed. And that if they didn't give money to true father and the unification church, as it was known, they would basically torture their ancestors in the afterlife. Also, he would have his followers that were in the States, the young people that he would recruit, go around and sell little trinkets and things and tell people they're from a youth group and whatever and sell things. Then he would take that money and parlay it into businesses where he built this insane empire. And this is when he eventually will become a billionaire. Okay. He was really good at business, truly. And he's actually even credited with bringing sushi to the United States. Moon declared himself king of the ocean and he had this vision and it, it actually did kind of come to be where he's like, we're going to build the ships and we're going to use the ships to fish. And then we're going to take that fish and we're going to build markets and we're going to distribute the fish. And now I'm going to be king of the ocean and the world. And that's kind of what happened. I mean, I don't know about the king of the ocean and the world, but he has this market, True World Foods, still exists today, a seafood market, and um, he built the ships and owns like a ship manufacturing company, and he's actually credited with bringing um, sushi to uh, the United States because he supplied uh, fish to like most of the uh, sushi restaurants at the time. And then he also owned media companies. He had a TV network. He had a recording studio and he even owned a newspaper. This newspaper was called the Washington Times. And actually it is said that Ronald Reagan uh, used to read this newspaper every day. It was like a conservative uh, newspaper in Washington. I found this video, old C-SPAN video where uh, Bush talks about reading uh, the Washington Times. When I think of the Washington Times, I think of a publication that has brought much needed balance to the way Washington is covered these days. I established the Washington Times to fulfill God's first desire to save this world. And the free sex is centered on Satan. The world literature and the media have often stimulated the free sex. Free sex should completely disappear. What is the differences between men and women? This is true. A human sexual organs are shaped as concave and convex. Why are they shaped that way? Therefore, now nobody can oppose me. Oppose me. Talking, liberal, talking, can't that bad, bad, worst guy. Oh, sweet cherry. And then his real estate holdings. His real estate holdings are insane. He has mansions all over. Um, and then he also has like a hotel. He owns a hotel. He owns a Manhattan center. Like he owns a lot of things. One of the groups that he has is called Ton Gil Group. And it owns a lot of businesses in Korea and in the U.S. And Ton Gil Group uh, is being run by one of his sons and his son, uh, his name is Justin. He also owns a gun manufacturing company known as Car Arms. Remember how I told you that Moon's son would start his own cult? Okay, that's the youngest son. His name is Sean. 
Sean started a, a, a gun cult where they like basically worship AR-15s. And he's doing this in, in collaborating with his brother who owns car arms that manufactures AR-15s. I'll get into that uh, a little bit more in depth later, the, the whole gun cult thing. Back to the timeline. We're in the 70s. Moon is anti-communist, really anti-communist. And at this time, right, 70s and 60s, that's like a hot topic. He's also using his money to influence politics. This is kind of where he starts getting himself into a little bit of trouble. It is alleged that he had women, his young female followers, sort of plant themselves into the offices of politicians to get information and report back to him. And remember, I told you, BHP, his loyal follower, who was part of the KCIA, the Korean CIA, okay? He is basically accused of spying on the US to report back to the Korean CIA. And there ends up being an investigation into this in Congress in 1976. They say that Moon is masquerading as this religious leader, but really he's a spy. And he is a political tool for Korea and they don't like it. They say that his church is a cover and they start saying that he's also committing crimes, including tax evasion and conspiracy and things like that. So Moon is really upset about this and he tries to sue the chair of the committee that's investigating him for $30 million. Well, that suit ends up getting dismissed and this creates a negative image of Moon in the media at the time. He starts being known as Looney Mooney and that's where the whole Mooney name comes from where they call this cult the Moonies because they're officially like the Unification Church and he is like true father and his wife is true mother, but now they're known as the Moonies. So now it's 1977 and Moon feels like he's being attacked by the United States and he's trying to like fight back, but you know, he doesn't want to leave the US just yet because he's making a lot of money. And so there's this one speech that he gives uh, on the 23rd anniversary of the church. And it's in 1977, and I want to read you some quotes from this. In this country, women have a commanding voice at home. In a typical American home, the wife is the master of the house, while the husband is like a servant. His shoulders are hunched over, and he's always checking to see what his wife's mood is. When I was matching couples for the blessing, I asked the Western men what nationality they would like their wives to be. 99% of them asked for Oriental women. I'm sure it was very embarrassing for the Western sisters to hear that all the men wanted to marry Oriental women. It would not be easy for most of you American women to have an Oriental husband because most of them are shorter than you are. God gave women the privilege of always looking up to their husbands. They should not look down on men. That is the principle. God actually made women shorter than men for the sake of women. If women were taller than men, then throughout history their lives would have been even more miserable because they would have to do all the reaching for high things. He says, In looking at what America has done to me, my personal reaction is sometimes an intense desire to get revenge. I even sometimes feel that this nation cannot be forgiven. I did not come here to take direction from the State Department or to win the little green card that permits me to live in this country. I have absolutely no inclination to stay in this country. I'm only here because of the mandate of God. Put yourself in my position. Look at what the media has done in the last three and a half years, portraying me as a monster. From that point of view, this nation has committed unforgivable acts. Yet, if I were to leave, this country would be miserable. If white America fails to respond, then God will raise up another people or another nation that will come against the white people of America. On the other hand, however, since primarily white people are denouncing me, God can send more young white people to us and in the future, more white people will rise up in my defense. That is the way God will work. The Unification Church is a school far greater than Harvard or Yale or Princeton and is a place where only the elite of the universe can enroll. Those who can come to the Unification Church have to be special. 
You cannot join unless you have received special revelation from God. That is why I say that this is really a gathering of the elite. You have heard before about your seven-year course, but you did not feel it to the bone. Those who can say they are already committed to it, please raise your hands. Have you prayed? God, at this moment I pledge to you that I will begin my seven-year course. I shall no longer follow the course of Adam and Eve, who failed. But within seven years' time, I shall finish the path of perfected Adam and Eve. God, trust me. The best way for you to safely journey through this period is to put yourself down on the lowest possible level, where you can even envy the beggars, where even sitting down at a table to eat becomes a luxury. For seven years in the Unification Church, you will be crazy about fulfilling your mission, forgetting about eating, sleeping, and everything else. Through all of that, you must be absolutely obedient. So this is why people were calling him Looney Mooney. Stuff like this. He was getting followers, though, and people were joining. And a lot of the techniques that were used in this cult were things like love bombing and creating community and giving people a sense of belonging and validation. That was the beginning. And then once people really were emotionally attached to the people in the group and stuff like that, they would then slowly deprive them of sleep and food and give them quotas of money to make and control aspects of their life. And that's kind of where it went to a dark place. And so in the 70s and 80s, you had a lot of this anti-cult movement where they were deprogrammers and parents would, according to Moon, come and kidnap their kids from him and try to deprogram them. And this was happening a lot. And there was even one guy, his name is Steve Hassan, and he was an ex-member. And everyone was smiling and sincere and warm. And I was just like not getting that this was a cult. This is how they operate. The deprogrammers were making comparisons with Hitler and Moon. And I said, I don't care if Moon is like Hitler. I've chosen to follow him and I'll follow him to the end. They, they would say, you have to look three inches into people's eyes, like this. Hi there. How are you? Stop. <laughs> when people left and started talking about the things that happened there, they talked about the slapping therapy and the ansu, and they talked about the suicide training, how there were certain teachings that said that it was better for you to kill yourself and make it look like a murder if you were taken by a deprogrammer and could not escape. Like this is one quote, someone says, the best thing would be to throw ourselves in front of the deprogrammer's car because then he'd be charged with murder. Second, depending on how much time we have, we were told to slice either our wrist or our jugular vein. So now it's 1982 and shit is about to hit the fan. Moon has this huge public um, mass wedding ceremony where it's in Madison Square Garden, 2,000 couples were married, and things on the outside seem great, but behind the scenes, things are falling apart. He'd been charged with tax evasion and that was about to come to a head. On top of that, his children were out of control. Moon's eldest son, he goes by Steve. Steve was a problem child. He got expelled from middle school. He was shooting a BB gun at the other students and he got really into drugs and alcohol. And then Moon's daughter, Anjin, she, when she was 16 years old, uh, sort of started hanging out with Steve, her older brother, and they were partying together. Moon started to worry, and instead of blaming himself or his wife for their complete lack of discipline, he blamed America. He was like, see, this is the problem. It's corrupting them. They need to get married. That was his solution. So he arranges marriages for his daughter and his son. He chooses a 15-year-old girl uh, called Nan Suk Hong, and he's like, okay, she's going to marry my son. And then for his daughter, remember BHP, his friend who was harboring his secret son, who was with the KCIA living in the US? Okay, he chose his son, James, to marry his daughter. But guess what? Turns out, allegedly, the 
the daughter engine, she actually had a crush on Sammy Park, her half brother that she didn't know was her half brother because they would go hang out there. Their parents were friends. And so she wanted to actually marry him when she found out that the dad was arranging this, but the dad was like, no, um, he didn't tell her, but I'm sure he was like, that's your brother. And so he ends up, um, matching her to James. Now the unofficial story, and this is from the person that I know, they told me that, and they remember they were in the church. They say that there was some sort of SA thing that happened allegedly that James SA'd her and that the father's response was to marry her to the person who SA'd her. I really hope that's not true. Uh, later on, Injun would actually say that she felt like this marriage was an R word. Like she felt like she was R worded by the marriage. And um, it doesn't go well for either of them, those marriages. Not at all. But before the marriages fell apart, something else happened horrible, awful. Moon's 17 year old son dies in a car crash. After that, he ends up being found guilty of the tax evasion charges. And he is sentenced to 18 months in prison. And so there's this mugshot. I even found this picture of him when he was in prison. And in 1985, though, he is released from prison. Remember the eldest son, Steve, the problem child? Well, at this point, he's a raging cokehead, alcoholic, and whatever else. And he gives this sermon where he is um, kind of off the rails. I'm standing here being judged by you. What the f do you judge me by? Huh? Do you respect me? <sighs> Jesus Christ. Life sucked today. Can you please stand up, please? He's married to Nan Suk at this time. Remember, he married her when she was 15 in 82. Now it's like the mid 90s and they have four kids and she's pregnant with the fifth and he is about to beat her so bad that she almost lost the baby. She claims that he was doing coke and she walked in on him and she was seven months pregnant and she was fed up and she decides to flush the coke down the toilet. Well, this sends Steve into a rage. She says that, quote, he smashed his fist into my face, bloodying my nose. He wiped my blood on his hand, then licked it off. Tastes good, he said. This is fun. She was done. She takes the kids and she leaves and she starts writing a tell-all book. The book, by the way, is called In the Shadow of the Moons. She does an interview with 60 Minutes with Injun, the sister I told you about that was allegedly R-worded and essayed. In this interview, they allege that Steve abused Nansuk and James abused Injun, like their husbands, and that they were both adulterers and drug users and that their father was too. Like Moon was an adulterer and that's when they mentioned publicly the secret son. Reverend has at least one illegitimate son. Moon's daughter confirmed that. That I know of, yes. You know the child? Yes, and his name is Sammy. It was a bombshell. Moon was afraid that they would come out, right? Annie and her son Sam and say, yeah, like, I'm the secret son, it's all true, and just completely ruin everything because he preached that adultery was the worst thing you could do and now he's going to be exposed as an adulterer himself. This would just be awful. He's already just come out of prison. So he ends up with BHP presenting a contract to Annie and her son, Sam, basically telling them not to talk about it and not to make any claims on inheritance that they're going to get a lump sum of like uh, one and a half million dollars each. And then later on, if Sam, because he's supposed to be BHP's son, you know, that's what they're pretending. If later on in life, he doesn't get a high position in one of the companies as BHP's son, then he'll get $20 million. 
this was verbal. This wasn't part of the written contract. They agree, they sign, they get their lump sums of one and a half million and they don't say anything. So then a year after this interview with 60 Minutes, there's another tragedy in the family and that is when uh, one of Moon's sons dies. And what happened is um, contested because officially it was ruled an unaliving. Um, he basically jumped, is the official story, from the 17th floor of Harris Casino in Reno, Nevada and died. At the time when this happened, friends and family of the son did not believe that he ended his life. They said that he was 21 years old, he was just about to start studying, he had plans, he seemed happy, and they think that the whole thing is suspicious. A uh, few people did come out and say that he had some issues where he felt trapped in the marriage that his father had arranged for him, and maybe that was the cause, and then other people said it wasn't actually that bad. There still are doubts to this day, but officially he ended his own life. What this created was a problem because remember, true father and true mother are creators of this perfect sinless bloodline. And the bloodline isn't looking so perfect and sinless. So Moon decides to say, no, 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 no. It's not my fault. I'm not the sinner. My children are not the sinners. It's America. America, it's Satan's playground. This is the problem. It's a satanic country. It's polluting and ruining my children. When he would rail against the United States and stuff, some Americans agreed with him. Around this time, he decides he needs to widen his recruiting pool and he starts focusing on black Americans. He goes on a very strategic tour where he like goes to 50 cities and he goes to black churches and places like that and he starts giving speech, trying to convince them of his teachings and ask them to join. And it doesn't go over well. I want to read you an article. This was in 2001. It says, the Korean-born religious leader told the audience that homosexuals, childless couples, and people's misuse of their love organs are destroying society. The head of the male, the love organ, is shaped exactly like a poisonous rattlesnake, he said. And just like a rattlesnake, it's always looking for a hole. If you misuse your love organ, you destroy your life, your nation, your world. Moon added that 70% of divorces are the fault of the women, primarily because they believe ownership of their love organ is for themselves and not under the hand of their husband. Some members of the audience, which was lar largely composed of black Christians and Muslims, walked out during the speech. One woman yelled that Moon was a liar when he said people needed the blessing of his lineage to enter heaven because he is free from original sin. He was, you know, as the kids today like to say, Delulu, okay? He was delusional because he made this announcement and he said, by February 2013, all of, human all of humanity would be under one global nation that he ruled, of course, and this global nation is called Chun Il Guk. He decides to go back to Korea and prepare for this global nation. And he ends up building a castle that actually looked like the United States Capitol building. He makes his own police force, his own national anthem. His own flag. So now it's 2004 and some really weird shit happened. He gets crowned in a United States Senate building, surrounded by religious leaders and politicians who kneel and bow. I don't know if they knelt, but they bowed and they crowned him. Senators and congressmen and representatives of all the families of the world joined in. You don't bow and crown somebody in an American government building, bitch. It's a democracy. Okay. I just got really crazy. I found only one video of it and it was so blurry. I was just like, Urgh. but I did find pictures and articles like New York times talked about it. Apparently it was like this big secret and then it was revealed and it was like this crazy ass shit that went down. Anyway, that happened in 2004. Now it goes from weird to scandalous because remember the daughter I told you about Anjin? Okay, she's about to have a huge ass scandal that's gonna happen. And in 2004, she starts an affair 
with the keyboard player. He was also a member of the church and he played in this band and she starts an affair with him. His name is Alistair Ferrant, okay? Remember that for later. Now we are gonna jump to 2008 because in 2008, several things happen. Remember Steve, the cokehead eldest son? Okay, he dies of a heart attack. So after his eldest son dies, Moon publicly says that his youngest son, this is the one who's gonna create the gun cult, by the way, his youngest son, Sean, is supposed to take over the religious affairs in the church in Korea, the Unification Church. So he gives it to his son. When he dies, obviously, his son will take it. The same year that he does this announcement, he gets into a helicopter accident in Korea with his wife. And although they both survive, for a moment there, they were feared dead. And so during this time, the children start fighting over the Unification Church in America. It was the only asset left that Moon hadn't designated to a child. And so this crazy story comes out where like they the all of the younger ones turned on the older one because the older one said well i'm the eldest his name was preston they basically staged this this coup essentially when the eldest son is out of the country write this memo where the daughter she goes into the boardroom and she pressures the members of the board to resign and then she replaces them with people that are loyal to her and then they vote and they make her the head of the church. The parents end up surviving though, right? True mother and true father, they end up surviving. And so they're in Korea, they're fine. Meanwhile, the daughter is in charge of the church in America and she does this major rebrand. She changes the church name from Unification Church to Love and Life. She creates a band for the church called Sonic Cult. And guess who's in the band playing keyboards? The guy she's having an affair with, Alastair. But guess what? she ends up hiring this Norwegian guy named Ben to be the lead singer of the band. And she ends up having an affair with him too. And she's basically having an affair with two members of this band, right? And then there's a story that happens where they end up finding out about each other in this hotel room and they get into a fight, like a physical fight. And she ends up choosing the new guy, Ben, over the other guy. And the other guy, his life is ruined. Like his wife found out and everything's bad and he lost everything and she dropped him. And now she's with this other guy, Ben. In 2009, uh, Ben's wife actually finds out about the affair when she goes on his laptop and she sees a bunch of explicit emails, she said, from engine on the laptop. So the wife, she responds to these emails by messaging engine back being like, I'm his wife. And basically she confronts her. She says after she sent that email, her husband, Ben, and this other guy, they come over to her and they basically tell her like, you need to leave and take the baby and go away and drop this and do all like, they basically like bullied her into just like going away and being quiet, but she didn't. She went to a church official and told them. Injun's husband, James, actually defended her to the church official being like, no, that woman is crazy and jealous. Like, you can't believe her. My wife doesn't is not doing having an affair with her husband. Like, that's crazy. Turns out they apparently had this open marriage or something. I don't know, but he knew about this affair and he would actually cover for her even in this second scandal that happens because guess what? At this time in 2009, there is a blog, it's a Tumblr page called How Well Do You Know Your Moon? And it is created in 2009. And it's created by what's known as a second gen. Second gen are Moonies who were born into the, um, the group, the cult, the church, whatever. They're born into it, right? First gen chose to be in it, second gen, born into it. Usually their parents were matched and married in a mass ceremony and the second gen are their kids. So he was gay and that's against the church's teachings and he gets sent to, um, I think it's called, oh, I'm going to mess up the name. I was trying to practice it earlier. I think it's called like Chung Pyong. He gets sent to this center or something church affiliated um place in korea where they basically sort of like 
beat the evil spirits out of you and you have to do like really tough like boot camp things and wake up early and read the thing it's like really like a like a boot camp for the church to to for troubled kids let's say and so he gets sent there after he comes out as gay and he talks about this ansu ritual where he's beaten and it's awful and he said that was like a turning point for him so he leaves there when he gets home he says he finds out about Nansuk's book the expose and he's looking online he finds out about all these rituals from the early days from ex-members talking about it and that's when he started his blog talking about like the dark side of the Moonies, if you will. This is going to factor in because he's going to end up exposing a huge scandal that's going to change a lot of shit with this church. A year before that happens, in 2011, the youngest son of Moon, the one who would end up starting the gun cult, he actually sues his mom, Hak Jahan. He sues his mom claiming that she siphoned money from one of his companies that he's in charge of, $23 million, and illegally uh, put it into a foundation that she runs of the church, and he's suing her in, in Korean court saying she needs to give the money back. This is the beginning of their battles. A year later, this is where everything goes to shit, because Injun, who's running this Love and Life church in the States and doing all that, she just vanishes. 2012, disappears. All of a sudden, nobody sees her, and they were like, where is she? Where is she? No answer. The Tumblr page is talking about this. No answer. Then, also in 2012, Sun Myung Moon dies. On September 2nd, he dies of pneumonia. He's like 92. And they have the funeral. It's a huge deal. Everyone is there except for his daughter, the one that's been missing. When the daughter didn't show up to the funeral, everyone was like, okay, where is she? And then a week after the funeral, the How Well Do You Know Your Moon Tumblr page posted a bombshell post where they had a birth certificate that showed that Injun had given birth to a baby and the father on the birth certificate was Ben the lead singer of the band, and it was a huge scandal. The birth certificate showed that the baby was born on May 1st, 2012. It explained why she wasn't there and no one saw her for months is she was hiding a pregnancy. And the reason why she hid the pregnancy and couldn't pass it off as a baby with her husband, James, was because James was, you know, Korean and the guy she had a baby with was Norwegian. And so the baby wasn't going to look fully Korean. And so she felt like she had to keep the whole entire thing a secret, but somehow the birth certificate leaked. And when this happened, this is when the mother, Hak Jahan, really takes over everything because her husband is dead. She is true mother and her son had just sued her a year before and now her daughter has got this scandal where she had an affair and a baby from the affair okay so what does she do she tells her daughter you have to resign and publicly apologize and her daughter does that then she sends a memo to the church in korea which was promised by true father moon okay to his son the youngest one sean who sued her okay she takes it from him and she sends this memo to the church where she says that, you know, his last dying wish was for me to take everything. And she mentions uh, him recording his voice and saying these things in this memo. And then she says basically that like from now on, everything is going to be centered on true mother. And she basically just takes the church from her youngest son, Sean. And now she has the church in America too, which she took from her daughter. She even took some of the businesses from her other sons. And it was like, holy shit. She went from that 17 year old illegitimate child who Moon took and like locked in the room to now she is the leader of this billion dollar empire. 
but her kids were not happy with her, particularly Sean, right? Because Sean was like, she's like a usurper and a whore of Babylon. A year after this all goes down, guess who comes out of hiding? I, I am the secret son or love child. The circumstances surrounding my birth condemn me for a large majority of my life to a life lived in the shadows. Meanwhile, the youngest son, Sean, starts his own church. Okay, this is the gun cult that I keep referring to, but it wasn't a gun cult at first. It started out as, uh, it was called the Sanctuary Church. This was in 2013, and it was largely based on his father's teachings that his father is the Messiah, and he was considering himself like the Pope. He took some of the followers with him after his mom took over that were loyal to him. And then at around 2017, he does a rebrand and this really does serve him well. And he changes his church name from Sanctuary Church to the Rod of Iron Ministries. That's why it is a human right in the kingdom to have the Rod of Iron. And he has this sort of, you know, um, revelation that the rod of iron that is mentioned in the Bible is actually an AR-15. And he quotes passages like, you will break them with a rod of iron, you will dash them to pieces like pottery, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron. And he's saying that this is actually an AR-15 that the Bible is talking about. There was the school shooting that happened um, in Parkland, and that is when he really gets on the map because just a few days after that school shooting, he has a ceremony where it's a blessing ceremony, a commitment of the couples just like his dad would do, uh, but he had all the followers bring their AR rifles and bless the rifles and um, a nearby elementary school had to evacuate and so the local news was all over the story. What or who has raised so many eyebrows at Lake Limestone and beyond? The person who is in Christ is greater than any superhero you see on the, on the silver screen, that means the movies. Meet the Reverend Sean Moon, youngest son of the founder of the Unification Church. Christians say, we're, I'm, a, I'm a cult leader, and they say, you're a cult members. Well, they said that about Jesus Christ, too, and they... This video from the Associated Press shows those folks love them some guns. We believe that everybody, every, especially Christian, should have an AR-15. In our church, we believe that he is the returning Jesus, so uh, he anointed me as his heir and successor. Uh, doesn't mean I'm the Messiah, no, but I would be something like the Pope. And so they get a lot of followers because there were a lot of people who were supporting this idea. And so he ends up moving. He buys this huge, like several acre property and it's a, in a very gun friendly area and the laws and everything are very, very gun friendly. He has a, an, a crown made of ammo and a golden AR and all his followers are wearing these ammo crowns and these ARs. And he starts doing what his father did too, where he aligns himself politically with people who have the same beliefs. So he starts becoming very, um, any, any sort of like pro gun politicians he's aligning with and he becomes a really big Trump supporter. And remember, his brother owns car arms that manufactures AR-15s and they're next to each other. So, you know, he, he released a book about his beliefs, like Rod Iron, Iron Ministries beliefs, and he had the book signing at his brother's gun store. So the people who came to the book signing, you know, would buy his brother's guns and his brother was a member of his church and would donate you know, tax-free, like huge amounts of money that he got from selling the guns to his brother as like, you know, a member of the congregation. So it's like they had this team going and it seemed to work for both of them. And then he had like the scandal because apparently he was at the um, Capitol uh, building in January 6th, but that's a little bit fuzzy. He denies it. He was like, no, 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 I was just singing. Um, but then he, there's videos of him. I guess he got tear gassed. Everybody got tear gas. Hey, who's the enemy? Everybody got Are we the enemy? And then there was another huge thing that happened, and this has to do with the Japanese members. They got so much money from them. There was this scandal that broke out in 2022 where it was revealed that like between six and ten million dollars that came from Japanese members were used by uh Moon and his wife and the high-ranking officials to gamble in Las Vegas. 
And the part about it that's crazy is that they would always preach against Vegas. They, you know, like Sin City, right? They were like, this is Satan's city and it's evil and it's that. And meanwhile, they were gambling with their donations in Vegas while they claimed that Vegas was evil. So when this came out, it was another huge scandal and the Japanese members were pissed. So pissed that one son of a woman who was part of this church in Japan ended up assassinating Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe. Now, what, what does Shinzo Abe have to do with any of this? Well, turns out that he's affiliated with the Unification Church. He was paid by them to do an appearance, and the political party has long-standing ties with the church, and he was caught, and he admitted to the shooting, and he said straight up, like, I wanted to shoot True Mother, like Hak Jahan, but I couldn't get close enough to her. So I did a homemade gun, and then I went, the day before I assassinated the prime minister in Japan, I went to the unification church in Japan, and I shot at the church. The next day I went and I did the assassination, and it's because my mom gave all our money to the church, ruined our lives. Apparently he went to a really good school, got really good grades, but couldn't afford to even go to college, even though he got accepted and stuff, because his family had no money, because the church, they gave all the money to the church, and he feels like, it's the church's fault that he's in this situation. That resulted in the Japanese government, like the people who are associated with the Unification Church completely tried to disassociate with the church, from the church, sorry, and then went after them in these investigations. And apparently now they're trying to dissolve the church in Japan. So we'll see what happens with that. But that is basically the story of the Moonies and the Rod of Iron Ministries. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you guys in my next one. Bye.